Welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve, and in this video, we'll be reviewing the EVco EVI Power Home Charger from a company who has attracted a lot of attention in the home EV charging space for what is now one of the more popular chargers on the market. We'll take a look at it, run through some of the usual tests, and see how it performs charging our Hyundai Ionic 5 and our family's Tesla Model Y. So let's take a look, unboxing, and reviewing the EVco EVI Power Home Charging Unit. So right at the top of the box here, you can see the EV Smart Charger up to 48 amps, as I say, EVco the brand. And we've got the relatively small form factor there, at least looking at it from the square style. And the box is quite a significant cube, but uh, not maybe as tall or as large as some of the others we'll see. So let's get into the unboxing here. If we open it up, warranty and ambassador program. Promotional literature, wall mount template for the EV charger and then for the holster, then an installation guide, all packaged up, and then the unit itself, which comes in the protective casing and then a uh, bag just to keep it safe. So we'll start to get into that here and unwrap to see what we've got as a full package. Pulling out the unit substantial wiring and connector behind it. You get your significant hardware to mount it to the wall. Did a very neat, quite thin and compact wall unit with uh, some pretty substantial cabling down here. That's uh, definitely on the thick side of things that we've seen before. In the case of the EVco EVI Power, one of the things that I'm quite uh, positive on here is the input cable, which quite often is a small pokey thing that uh, isn't you know, long enough to really maneuver around different installation settings. And we have had that problem with other units before. In the case of the EVI power unit, it is just above three foot and has a nice amount of flex that you can use to accommodate different 240 volt outlet settings. So wherever it's positioned and oriented, if it's been put in a different way up, if it's too low to the ground, you have that flexibility to turn it and still get the EVI power unit mounted. So that's a nice little addition and it's three times longer than some of the competing products. Like Holster for your J1772 cable protected J1772 connector, which feels just through the bubble wrap, very substantial as well. And then a little guide on this side for your 40 amps rated out of 48 amps overall. That's 9.6 kilowatts of power out of 11.5 kilowatts, 200 to 240 volts. Conforms to CSA standard C22.2 number 280, great. Um, you've got your charging status indicator, green light equals please plug in, flashing green light equals plugged in, flashing blue light equals charging, solid blue light equals charging finished, and a red flashing light equals a fault. Signal status indicator, blue is connected, configuration mode, connecting to the internet, no connection. Okay, so as I say, fairly substantial unit there. You've got your wall mounting brackets on the back. Nice clean look with only the charging indicator light and the progress light. There's the solid handle branded with Evico. Rigid feeling trigger there, which is sometimes a break point, so I feel like that's going to be a solid thing covered with your rubber cap. Same with the nice solid holster. Lots of hardware to mount that to a wall if it's going to be a permanent mounting. Get your templates for the holster, templates for the charger to mount that to the wall easily. Installation guide, which will, as I say, just a big, big piece of promotional literature there. And the box from whence it came. So let's get into the stats of the EVco home charger, the specs, and uh, give it a try charging the Ionic 5. Okay, so all hooked up, and we've got the wire run helping this out. Solid connector, as we talked about. Let's get it plugged in. That's a 25 foot cable, as I say. Then you've got your charging 
indicator light flashing on the EVCO logo and this is your status indicator. So we've been through this earlier on, just for your status indicator light is solid blue. So all fairly standard stuff. Let's look at the rate. Eight point nine kilowatts. I'll fire this up and just do the. We can look at the EV settings menu, and you've got your charging current. Currently, it's set to max one hundred percent on both types of chargers. You can ramp the current itself down to ninety percent, and you'll see that change down to about eight kilowatts, and extend out the remaining time to one hundred percent a little bit, maybe by about an hour, a bit less, and then. Coming down to 60%, that'll drop way down to more like 5, and extend the time out to about 10 hours, I would guess, a bit, a bit less. So, not too bad in either case, but... And then you can do this stuff in the app as well, it's worth uh, noting through the app that there are some interesting features. Um, nothing groundbreaking in there, you can schedule three different types of charging time and put a kilowatt hour price to that so if you've got time of use rates cheaper overnight for example that kind of thing you can set that lower rate and understand how much less you're paying overnight than when you charge in the day if you need to um amperage you can bring this down again this is uh, a bit less granular in the hyundai ionic 5 than it is in something like a tesla and you can then do that in the evco app as well so that you can dial down the amperage from that maximum extend the charge out if you want to uh, just have it charged to 100 percent overnight and maybe it's going to be a bit too quick for you um so all nice features nothing that's uh, groundbreaking again but nice things to have and uh kind of baseline if you're going to look at one of these connected chargers I haven't been able to get that set up yet, but I'll put some screenshots over of the different features that uh, come with the EVCO app, all kind of standard stuff. It'll hook up to your home Wi-Fi, what the rate is doing, when it's going to complete charging, power that's flowing, scheduled charging, all that good stuff. And the uh, unit itself has that big advantage of the uh, input cable. That's probably the biggest piece that I'm finding of value for various different installation types right now. Everything else, good solid unit, well reliably built. Uh, seems like it'd take a lot of drops. Uh, it's got a rugged handle, rugged clip. The build quality of the unit itself is very good, very sleek, clean. So no complaints at all, it's doing its job well in the charging tests. We'll get it on the Tesla after this one, once it's uh, done and see how everything hooks up. So solid blue light. If the car is off, if you're in it and it's turned on, it'll keep drawing some power until you turn it off, at which point it's a flashing green light. But if you leave the car as it would be normally, not sitting inside its charge, just turning it off and walking away, you'll get to that target charge and it'll stop itself. Okay, so charging the Model Y now, after the Ionic 5. Set to 80% as well, which at the moment we're at 24%. Estimated about 5 hours, Ionic it was maybe at 40% and estimated similar time. You can see there's a little more detail here on the uh, Tesla screen that it's pulling the full 40 out of 40 amps that it's allotted on this connection at 220 volts. Um, so there's just that functionality on the Tesla which uh, might make the sliding amperage on the app of any of these connected chargers redundant but it's nice to have in this car if you don't have it like we don't then uh, that could be a nice thing to have in the app and something that gives you a little more um, flexibility on how fast you charge or how slow you charge. As we start to get towards uh, SAE J3400, NAX Tesla connector being more standard 
as a port on other vehicles you'll start to see this type of unit come with the uh, J3400 plug as well or, but for the moment this is what you've got the J1772 works just fine and it's uh, as a connected unit it's charging this it charged the Ionic 5 no problem <laughs> So that's a wrap on the review of the EVCO EVI power home charging unit. What do you think? Is this one that would you would consider for your home charging and your electric vehicle? Was it something that you'd maybe consider taking on the road or to a second location? What are the advantages and disadvantages of this unit? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers.